Doc, you better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Hello there, and welcome to In the Shot, where we take a look at films, film techniques, and the people who make films. My name is Colin, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite genres, and possibly the most important genre in film, science fiction. One of the things I love about sci-fi movies is how versatile they can be. We have everything from comedy, to action, to serious social commentary. Okay, that's probably a bad example. Now, movies definitely have a large influence on our culture, and science fiction films are no exception. But what I want to take a look at today is how current events can influence what we choose to focus on in films. Like any other genre, if you go from decade to decade, you can see what was the topic of that time. So without further ado, let's explore the evolution of science fiction. Elements of science fiction have been in storytelling for centuries, but sci-fi as we know it is a relatively new literary genre. When it comes to movies, however, it's been around pretty much from the start. Le Voyage dans la Lune is often considered the first science fiction film coming out in 1902. While being an original story, it borrowed heavily from Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, which sort of set the stage for other films in the genre for about the next 20 years. In America, we saw a lot of adaptations of popular literature focused on grand themes of adventure and fantasy. In Europe, however, we saw a more serious approach. With a good deal of political unrest and World War I affecting many lives, filmmakers sought to use it as a way to explore social issues of that time. A famous example of this is Fritz Lang's 1927 film Metropolis, which dealt with a lot of political issues in Germany and the future of the country. But as we finish out the 20s, we have a few major events that would affect the genre for nearly two decades. First up, we have the advent of sound and dialogue in movies, and second, we have the Great Depression and World War II. When you pair that with a couple of large-budget sci-fi flops in America and Europe, science fiction hit a bit of a lull. With so many terrible things going on all at once, people began to look towards escapist films, and thus we have the low-budget film serials such as Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, and Dick Tracy, along with horror and sci-fi crossovers from Universal Pictures. Other than these, science fiction would remain mostly dormant until... With the first atomic bombs being dropped, we enter into what many consider to be the golden age of sci-fi. It's in this decade that we start to see a lot of variety in the genre all at the same time. With the fear of nuclear apocalypse, we get movies like Godzilla. Communist paranoia in the U.S. would spawn films like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and with UFOs fresh in the public's mind, we see a massive boom in alien films. With the steady success of the genre, some studios would attempt to revive the large-scale, serious take on science fiction with On the Beach and Forbidden Planet. Others would go the exact opposite and try and make a quick buck off the B-movie, which gained popularity during the decade and would provide a lot of fodder for Mystery Science Theater 3000 years later. As we move into the 60s, we enter into the bulk of the space race. While the fantasy side of sci-fi would continue to flourish, we hit upon what many consider a pivotal point in the genre with 2001 Space Odyssey. While panned by many critics upon its release, this entry into the genre would prove highly influential for decades to come with its realistic portrayals of space travel and broad scope in terms of storytelling. Pair that with the moon landing in 1969 and we hit a boom in the genre moving into the 1970s. <laughs> With such a massive public interest in space exploration and discovery, we begin to see large-scale sci-fi hits like Star Wars, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and Star Trek The Motion Picture. That sense of awe in the universe would drive a lot of big blockbusters during the decade. Back on Earth, though, we hit a turning point with Watergate. With conspiracies and distrust in the government on the rise, conspiracy thrillers became a staple of science fiction. As the decade came to a close, we were treated to Ridley Scott's terrifying vision of the future, Alien. Alien's lo-fi and dark depiction of the future would not only pave the way for sci-fi horror, but also greatly influence the visual stylings of sci-fi movies for years to come. While big-budget sci-fi films would continue to flourish during the 80s, the effects of the recession and advancements in technology would lead to most science fiction taking place on Earth rather than in space. Films like Terminator, Robocop, and E.T. would dominate the box office, while more serious literary adaptations like Blade Runner and Dune would flop. Animation also started to become a more widely used medium for science fiction, especially in Japan with popular anime like Akira. 
With computers reaching people's homes and with the fascination of them picking up, Tron would pave the way for computer graphics and movies being one of the first times a major studio would invest time into them. Freeze! And speaking of computers, welcome to the 90s. Welcome. With the birth of the internet and computers becoming a major part of our culture, they became more prevalent in film and computer animation began to grow in popularity. With Jurassic Park and The Matrix being just a couple examples of computer graphics used effectively during this time, we start to see a resurgence in large-scale epic blockbusters as we move into the 2000s and today. And what a great time we live in for science fiction. Not only do we have such a large body of past work to enjoy, but there's so much variety in today's science fiction films as well. The genre has grown, but we have many different routes to choose from as filmmakers and as an audience. We've seen large-scale science fiction thrive and smaller budget work reach people all over the world through the internet. As we move towards the second half of the decade and the world around us changes, I can't wait to see where we go from here. I'm Colin, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of In The Shot. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time.